Since November of 2023, I've owned Igor, an F-150 Lightning standard range, but I needed extra features for future channel shenanigans. That didn't necessarily mean another F-150 Lightning, however. In fact, I had my sights set on something else. Anything was game. I kept an open mind, looked at what was available, and then I made a list. Here's what happened. Six deciding factors determined my next EV truck. Whoever checked off the most boxes got my business. Plain and simple, right? Turns out, uh, well, uh, no. But the good news is that the EV truck market has expanded here in Canada with a whopping five models now to choose from. Here was my list. The Cybertruck, the GMC Hummer EV, the Rivian R1T, the F-150 Lightning, and the Silverado EV. But did I really have that much of a choice? As far as trucks go, we're gonna have to forget shape, okay? Ugly shapes included. The Cybertruck is more than capable and revolutionary on numerous fronts if we put aside the fact that it's a triangle. And it was winning more than one consideration on my list. I canceled my Cybertruck order a while back due to many factors. You can watch that video right here or in the description later. But to my surprise, the four to eight year wait that myself and everyone else was forecasting vanished overnight. Only weeks before I decided to go EV truck shopping, Tesla announced the Cybertruck was available in Canada. If I placed an order for the Foundation Cyber Beast, I would likely get an invite within six to eight weeks, which totally shocked me. This means I had to reconsider this vehicle. I couldn't just ignore it. Heck, my YouTube homepage banner still has me sitting in one for crying out loud. The EV Hummer scores even better than the Cybertruck as far as availability goes. Here's why. These beasts are actually at the dealerships in BC right now. Both the Hummer EV 2X and 3X truck trims are in Canada and also available to build and price online. This, this is the mother of all EV trucks, the monster of excess. But by me simply making a couple phone calls and verbally waving around my big wad of vaporware money I obviously don't have, I soon discovered that for the right price, a Hummer was as good as parked in my driveway. Next is the Rivian R1T. And I must say, this one had me frustrated and quite frankly perplexed. Although the R1T has had a bit of an on again, off again start in Canada, you can now either buy one from current inventory or build one online, but only if you have a preferred postal code. Uh, yeah, that's right. You know, like your zip code in the States, we have postal codes. Rivian is limiting sales to different urban areas. Basically, shopping access is available to customers within a serviceable distance of a Rivian center. Basically, if you put in your postal code for anywhere outside of that shopping region, it indicates that the R1T is not available for you in your area. And to enter another postal code, I'm not really sure what that means. Is Rivian insisting that I move to a more upper class neighborhood in order to own one of their trucks? To become more civilized because they consider me far too unsophisticated for their urban clique? Yeah, I don't know. But being that they supposedly pride themselves on promoting the R1T as a true adventure truck built for serious off road and overland applications, but then only sell them in major urban centers? Either way, Rivian was off my list, those elite bastards. You know, keep your frickin' hoity-toity highbrow play truck in your factory then. But uh, truthfully, this was such a letdown because I had high hopes of actually owning one, but I'm not allowed to. Conversely, let's look over to the F-150 Lightning. It's ubiquitous. Almost every dealership has at least one in every trim, which makes it readily available. In most cases, no weights, no build and price or reservation bottlenecks. And with the 2024s being sold at blowout prices, you could even land yourself top of the line brand new 2023 platinum trims for about, I don't know, $20,000 less than the MSRP. So yeah, buckets of availability. The last one on my list is the Silverado EV. I really wanted to take a serious look at this truck, at least a serious test drive, especially now that the Rivian R1T was a non-starter. But after numerous phone calls and two visits to my local Chevy dealership in Castlegar, the one designated as my go-to for my Silverado EV RST reservation order, which by the way, I still have. And even a call into Chevrolet Canada to try to get some answers from somebody. Uh, well, as uh, George Bush once said, the left hand now knows what the right hand is doing. Yeah. Basically, no one seems to have a clue about what anybody else is doing in any other department about the rollout of their own freaking EV trucks. I didn't receive a single call. I didn't get an email or text to let me know the status of my order. My local dealership was about as tuned in as the banjo player in Deliverance. 
Half the dealers I called in the province said that none of the Silverado EV trims were available in Canada. Meanwhile, my buddy in Port Moody, Mike, was driving around in his 4WT, and I had already met him and filmed the freaking thing. You can, you can watch that video right here. Other dealerships said the RST is sold out and not available. But I told them while I was one of the RST reservation holders from the start, I'm probably in that list. They just didn't care. And they moved on to say that, well, they would happily sell me a 3WT or 4WT. But this makes zero sense since supposedly RSTs are already driving around in Ontario. There is no availability or there's some availability or there's a pile of availability according to who you happen to get on the phone. Either way, headache or not, I knew I could track one down if I ignored my reservation order and my dealership entirely and was willing to drive four to eight hours one way to test drive one. But did I? Well, the following factors decided that for me. The next big one, actually two on my checkoff list. Checkoff, see in Star Trek? I was making a little joke, sir. Anyway, service and serviceability. Well, it goes without saying that Silverado EV should, you know, get a big fat zero on this entirely because of my experience. But to be fair, especially since I really like this truck and wasn't willing to give it up on this so quickly, accessing vast dealer networks in almost every location in the country means that getting your truck serviced if something goes boom should be relatively easy. Whether anyone ever calls you back is another matter, but I kept Chevy alive and on my list because of their mature infrastructure to take care of my Silverado EV if I could ever find one. Now, GMC Hummer EV, surprisingly, offered by the same folks that have obviously botched, I don't know, numerous sales of their sister EV truck, scored high in that if I picked up a phone or went anywhere near a dealership and I asked about one in any major location, I'd not only get a response, but somebody would likely mm -hmm. try to tie me to a chair in the sales office and utter something like, sit down boy and let me sell you something. Okay, Cybertruck service and serviceability. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even say it. Anyway, service is a relative term with Tesla. Sure, most people, including me, detest going into dealerships because of the high-pressure, smarmy sales horde that will accost you upon arrival. But if you're like me, you've also found really honest, helpful, and professional people at dealerships as well. Finding absolutely no one is just total BS for the amount of money one has to dole out at Tesla. If you do find a team of helpful Tesla people, give it time, uh, Musk will likely fire all of them, you know. But seriously, there's a lot more locations to go to these days. Or take a Tesla for a spin and be taken care of upfront by really knowledgeable people. But after that, not so much. And definitely not anywhere near as much when it comes to the Cybertruck, which is what I'm looking for. If I can't sit in it, drive it, test it, smell it, feel it, play with the buttons. Oh yeah, right. Uh, Tesla doesn't have any buttons. They have nothing. It's a big flat desert except for this big steroidal iPad in the middle of your freaking truck. But anyway, Tesla is making huge gains in building out sales and service centers. They announced Cybertruck test drives would be available and you wouldn't need a reservation to have one, even though there is nothing on the Canada website or in their showroom. So, you know, there's that. When it comes to the Lightning, I have firsthand knowledge about Ford service and serviceability. There's no wait. No special 1-800 number. No, we'll send out a service truck from Kansas. I have a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore. To help you get unstuck. And it should be there in a week kind of crap. I can get my truck looked at, tires rotated, or a salesman handing me the key fob to take a new truck out for a drive within minutes of arriving at the dealership. No other EV truck offers that yet. Any dealership that sells Lightnings also has trained technicians certified to service EV trucks other than most EV truck manufacturers today. I still had four trucks on my list after this, but the last three factors will end that right quick, let me tell you. The actual truck specs and features that I plan to use on a regular basis had to be there, and many weren't. My next truck would have to be able to go over adverse road conditions, either through adding a suspension lift and tires or coming with those options already. It has to have a heat pump to handle the Canadian winter and preserve my range. It also had to be able to haul. I do more hauling than towing, and being able to handle a heavy load in the bed, as well as control and measure my payloads, is something I've always wanted. As I also take, as you've discovered, really huge trips, and I, I plan to do a lot more of them because I'm, I'm nuts. Range is important, but how much efficiency is lost if it's done simply with sheer mass is a problem. I need to ensure that when I put those electrons in my truck, they're efficiently used because it's a cost, just like fuel. 
any other fuel. I also need onboard power flexibility. I was looking for a one-size-fits-all, general-purpose, work-and-play truck that just so happened to be electric. Let's compare apples to apples in the spec department and see who measures up. When it comes to payload, here are the numbers. Cybertruck can handle a solid payload of 1,134 kilograms or 2,500 pounds. The base model Hummer EV2X can only pull off a paltry 650 kilograms or 1,435 pounds. That's like just over half. Whereas the 3X drops even more to 580 kilograms or 1,300 pounds in a four and a half foot bed. That's not even a bed, that, that, that's the love seat. The best that the Silverado EV can muster is 793 kilograms or 1,750 pounds with the 3WT, while the 4WT and RST come in at only 635 kilograms or 1,400 pounds, which was a bit of a disappointment for the RST since it has that mid-gate to extend the length considerably, which I love from a hauling perspective. But if you can't put a lot of weight in it, who cares about how big the bed is? The Lightning Flash came in at 867 kilograms or 1,913 pounds. It's below the Cybertruck, but above everything else. As far as towing's concerned, Cybertruck can pull a huge amount, a maximum of 4,990 kilograms. That's 11,000 pounds. Although, you know, if you've been watching YouTube lately, <laughs> the, uh, the frames have been snapping off with a trailer hitch. You can't even fix that. So, you know, ooh, this, this, that. The Hummer EV is a complicated one. For the 2X version, a mind-bending 5,443 kilograms, which comes out to 12,000 pounds as possible, but only if you opt out of the whole off-road package, which really limits the rest of the truck. With it, you're looking at 3,855 kilograms or 8,500 pounds below all of the other options. The first edition and 3X with the larger 24 module battery both have a maximum capacity of even less at 3,400 kilograms or 7,500 pounds. The Lightning Flash with the max tow trailer package can pull 4,535 kilograms or even 10,000 pounds. Silverado EV is equally impressive. The 3WT offers 12,500 pounds, which is freaking crazy, while the 4WT and the RST offer an equal 10,000 pounds, the same as the Flash. By looking at simply towing and hauling the Hummer EV, well, it's, it's simply not going to cut it. But you know, I looked anyway. That is stupid. <laughs> it's horribly inefficient. Uh, it's as overweight as a well-fed sumo wrestler and absolutely ridiculous from almost every practical standpoint. That left me with three very capable options that could both tow and haul well. But what about range? According to Tesla Canada's website, the Cyberbeast Trimotor, the one I would have to buy, could pull off 484 kilometers or a, an even 300 miles. What's funny is to try to make it sound better, <laughs> Tesla snuck in the numbers with the range extender that, by the way, doesn't come with any of the truck trims and costs an extra $16,000 and basically renders your entire bed useless for anything else, making it no longer a truck at all, including for hauling because your payload capacity just got destroyed by adding a 500 plus pound battery pack. You know, that just pissed me right off actually. The Lightning Flash is a flat 515 kilometers or 320 miles. Not a lot, but standing head to head easily with the Cybertruck. So that's definitely two still on my radar. But then, <laughs> this is a Silverado EV. I mean, there's no denying the attractiveness of the range this thing packs. The 20 module 3WT achieves 632 kilometers or 393 miles. That's the little guy. The 24 module 4WT hits an impressive 724 kilometers or 450 miles, while the RST achieves an envious 708 kilometers or 440 miles. This totally nails the range category and therefore also takes the towing category because at worst, I'd be getting 300 plus miles of range with, with a full-size trailer. What's more, is this thing powers at 350 kilowatts, where the Cybertruck only achieves 250 kilowatts and the Lightning comes in at a distant 155 kilowatt. However, 
the time spent charging that behemoth of a battery isn't that much faster, being it has double the energy to stuff into it. And by the way, last time I checked, I haven't seen a lot of 350 kilowatt fast chargers around. With that said about the charging and the towing and the capacity and the range, and why is a lightning flash in my driveway? Well, I'm, uh, I'm not done yet. Now let's dive into off-road creds for a moment, shall we? The Cybertruck, after months of uh, kind of a lot of embarrassment and you know, disengaged locking differentials that buyers had already paid for, the Tesla beast finally started to show off its dirt creds. And, and they were good, but not without issues. Tesla claims 305 millimeters or 12 inches of travel in the, in the suspension and 406 millimeters or 16 inches of clearance. But this is deceptive. These are air suspension bag systems. As you pump them up, as you crank up your clearance, your travel vanishes because the bag becomes stiffer like a rock. Like a rock. Yeah, they use it in their commercials. I'm not a fan of air suspension for off-roading and this is why. At full height, there's 16 inches of clearance, sure, but that's in the Cybertruck's extract mode, where it restricts your speed to a crawl, because you're basically driving on a suspension-denied brick. Only then do you achieve the approach angles of 35 degrees and a departure angle of 28 degrees. At regular off-road settings, who knows how this all really works out. Now my next consideration, the Silverado EV RST and the WT trims, they're simply not cut out for off-roading. Their massive Hummer-like weight is a huge hindrance, along with a missing off-road mode and no locking differential. With only 7.9 inches of ground clearance, an approach and departure angles of 21.7 and 22.9 degrees respectively, and a long wheelbase and low breakover angle. This meant it's really for the streets and light duty gravel road work. The lightning flash, you know, it isn't any kind of, you know, Jeep Rubicon, but you know, it has an off-road mode. It's got a rear locking differential. It's got ground clearance of eight and a half inches and approach and departure angles of 24 and a half and 23 and a half degrees respectively. What I liked most was that outside of the massive control arms on the rear independent suspension and the entire armor plating under the whole truck, this thing was already able to take aftermarket Tremor and Raptor suspension builds. What's more is it has robust traditional suspension systems rather than that inflatable airbag. But none of this was enough to have me running away from the other two. In fact, it made me seriously weigh in how much actual off-roading I was planning to do. But the second biggest factor in all of this was creature comforts, features, build quality, and perceived value. And this one eliminated one more choice. The Cybertruck is an engineering masterpiece, and it has a center screen with the best software in the industry. That's simple, along with piles of functionality. But it's built to serve Tesla as much as it is to serve the driver. The only reason the Cybertruck has literally no interior features is that it speeds up and simplifies the manufacturing process and potentially increases the amount of money that can be made per vehicle. But how the heck does that help me, the driver? It doesn't. There's no way to weave a tail that makes having nothing in front of the driver a good thing. I want a freaking instrument cluster, or at least a heads-up display. I like having instantly accessible uh, windshield wiper stocks, signal stocks, infotainment and driver information directly freaking in front of me. Heck, a workable rear view mirror and a speedometer would be nice. I like all the ambiance, creature comforts, seat controls, HVAC controls. The Cybertruck is basically an empty triangle with a gargantuan iPad-like screen and nothing else. This this doesn't work for me. You know, after sitting in a fair number of Model 3s and Model Ys, I just can't do it, especially not in a truck. The Silverado EV, however, was still pretty sweet and is so tantalizing once I made the choice that the Cybertruck was becoming less likely. But unless you go to the top trim, I would have to say goodbye to all the goodies that make this vehicle so attractive. Sayonara to the mid-gate, and basically everything that comes standard on the flash. Silverado 3WT and 4WT is basically a Lightning Pro with a massive battery. And that brings us to the final clincher. But first, I want to take this moment to thank some amazing trucked up folk who watched this channel and who generously supported me through Super Thanks. It's made a huge difference for my upcoming marathon trip across Canada, something that will take me at least a month to accomplish. Because of them, this channel now has a GoPro charger with two extra batteries to ensure I don't have any dead zones like I did 
when I filmed here. To keep zero secrets from my loyal Trucked Up community, since inception, my very first video back in November, this channel has made a whopping total of $870. And my Trucked Up Canada-wide tour, it's going to cost you bit more than that. So you can see that any support you can offer makes this kind of content possible. If that's not an option, over 80% of my regular viewers don't click like or subscribe. And those likes and subscribes are what keep a channel like mine alive. So please click away and help this channel grow. Again, I'm so grateful. My deepest thanks. Now, the number one reason for the lightning flash being my top choice and out in my driveway over every other EV truck in Canada was, well, of course, price. But stop. Let's take a look at the whole picture just for a minute. With employee pricing, my local dealership, AM Ford and Trail, put me in the seat of my lightning flash for $79,000 Canadian or $58,465 US dollars. Oh, and a spare tire. Yeah. You, you might be asking yourself, why does he bring up a spare tire? Well, the Silverado EV and the Cybertruck don't have one. The base Cybertruck starts at 137,990 Canadian for the dual motor version. However, the one I can buy requires I spend $165,990 Canadian. So let's just do the math on that one number for a moment. That's over two times the price of the flash. I could buy two flashes. I, I mean, are you kidding me? For what? 500 pounds of extra payload that I'll lose immediately after putting in an off-road tire. The frunk's puny and shit falls out when you open it. The range is actually less. Sure, you can go from zero to 60 in under three seconds, but who'd want to? There's no in the world I could ever dole out that kind of cash for a truck, magical Bermuda Elon Musk triangle or not. With that said, these things are already plummeting in price. So in a year or two, I will certainly revisit this vehicle once the bugs are all worked out. But the Flash currently is every bit of truck for half the price. Oh, uh, but uh, Simon, Simon, hello. What about the Silverado, idiot? Honestly, the Silverado EV RST would probably be in my driveway had it not been for limiting factor number one at the beginning and getting brilliant service from my Ford dealership and test driving my new truck within minutes of arrival. I actually got to choose the, the color from five available Flashes on the lot. But take this one step further. Go sit in a Silverado EV in every equivalent trim and then do the same in the Lightning. Well, you, you can't actually because Chevrolet has none of them on their lots other than in strategic locations, which you'll never be able to find. But even online, if you go and watch Monroe Live, they recently went in and took a look at the RST trim, which someone bought in the States, by the way. So, yeah. And uh, took a look at the whole fit and finish and what you get for the money. The Chevy interior in the 3WT and 4WT is about as hard plastic as you can get. And the RST has to offer a lot more than a big battery pack to justify $124,000 Canadian. And quite frankly, the RST, well, that's the only trim that I wanted. The WT versions are great for the people who love to boat and camp and tow, but that's not me. The Silverado EV simply has nowhere near the everyday functionality, comfort, and bang for the buck of the flash. Hey, I appreciate you sticking around to the end of this long video for doing so and in support of my epic trip. I have created a 10% discount code for all of my t-shirts, sweaters, pins, and mugs to help raise funds. I hope you find something you might wear to one of my upcoming trucked up Canada wide stops. If so, just type in CDA Tour 10 at checkout for your discount. As always, thanks for watching.